mess. We were at the U.S. News STEM Solutions Conference in June in Austin. And there is such a national focus on this because what we're, produce, what we're producing is a nation of kids that are not able to compete globally. So, so only 69% of students who start high school finish four years later. And maybe that's, that's a national average. So perhaps that's lower in some schools. Um, an average of 7,200 students drop out of high school each day, totaling 1.3 million a year. Wow. Oh, <clears throat> that's this is American. Yes, yeah, this is from the white paper, American Revolution 2.0. And I have that. If any of you want it afterwards, give me your card and I'll send it to you. Each dropout costs a nation about 292,000 lost earnings, taxes, and productivity over a life, lifetime. So we do the back button right now. What is STEM? Everyone here knows it's science, technology, engineering, and math. And so STEM is different from traditional lecture-based teaching where someone's standing up and talking to you. It's an interdisciplinary approach where students learn to apply real-world lessons which enable them to compete in the new economy. So one of our board members, um, Marley Rangathana, is an engineer and he's with Micron. And he said it so eloquently last Sunday. We were talking to Jesse Tam, mm -hmm. one of your friends. And he just happened to be visiting our lab. He wanted to see the lab. And as, as uh, Marilee said, I went to engineering school. But when I got to my job, I wasn't doing any fun hands on. All I learned was formulas. But I wanted to know why things work. I wanted to be in the field. So this is what I'm a kinesthetic learner. So we teach kids that part of learning is failing because you have to try a whole lot of different things. So it's based on a lot of neuroscience that we, how we engage in learning and part of education is trying different things and concepts. And, and part of success is failure. So that's the and, uh, US rankings and various international competitive indicators, current innovation, competitiveness, Six in the world. Percentage of young adults who graduate from high school, 11. Science literacy among top students, fifth, 15 out of 65 countries. Very sad statistics. College completion rate, 16. High school completion rate, 20. Science proficiency of 15 year olds, 23rd. That just floored me. Um, Proportion of college students receiving science and engineering degree, 27. Mathematics literacy among top students, 28. Mathematics proficiency of 15 year olds, 31st. This is out of 65 countries. Improvement in innovation based competitiveness in the past decade, 40th. Quality of mathematics and science education, 48th in the world. Density, mobile, telephony, subscription, 77. But the quality of mathematics and science education, 48th in the world. Doesn't that shock you? Have you, any of you seen those statistics before? What did you think when you read those? I've seen them all my the last 20 years, I've been seeing them. But isn't that, doesn't that <coughs> make you concerned? Sure. Yeah. Make very concerned. I mean, and a lot of it hangs on that. Yeah. Because you're never going to be an engineer if you can't do math. That's right. No, you're not going to be a scientist if you can't do math. Um, it helps girls in STEM fields. Um, so you can see some of the statistics. And you can find this if you go Google girls in STEM. So women make up 40% of the U.S. workforce but hold only 24% of STEM jobs. And there's a greater income parity between men and women in STEM fields. In non-STEM jobs, men and Men earn 27% more per hour than women. In STEM jobs, men earn 16% more per hour than women. That should change too. 40% of men with STEM degrees work in related fields, 26% of women with STEM degrees. So this is our mission at PCS Adventures. We are a public company and we are looking to do uh, partner with nonprofits so that we can engage and support education STEM education in these adventure labs 
and implement these across the United States. And the next place we'd like to be is obviously back in the Seattle area. And since I've been a volunteer for First Place School for many years, we love to be in First Place. Those kids are near and dear to my heart. But the leader in K-12 hands-on robotics education, a brick lab STEM solution in all our classrooms, and right now we're also, our curriculum is being licensed in India and the Middle East. So India is right on with, you, with STEM education. And build a virtual community online so globally these kids can talk and engage with, with each other and learn from each other. So this is what we do. We make children's lives better through engaging education experiences. I love these little kids. And so some of the things we employ to teach STEM education, are, and, and these are, again, taught in 6,000 sites across the U.S. This is the Academy of Engineering on the right, um, and that's a whole academy. Uh, consulting for teachers and educators on how to implement um, STEM education, classroom management.